Fighting Chance Fund. Applications for eligible businesses and employees will be available April the 9th. And we've set aside nearly $7 million for this purpose. But given the need that, that's out there in our city, we recognize that these funds won't be able to provide assistance to all in need. And because these are limited funds, they will be distributed on a first submitted and correctly completed application basis. So please, use the time between today and Thursday to make sure that you have all the documents that you need and the information that you need. Have them all in order so that when you complete and submit your claim, it doesn't get rejected because it's incomplete. Use this time wisely. It's your chance. So, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you, St. Pete, for everything that you're doing, for hanging in there during these difficult and obviously very strange times that we're living in. Continue to be creative and innovative in how you're making the best of this difficult situation. Use technology to reconnect with family and with friends. Play a board game. Do some spring cleaning that you've been putting off. Go ahead and do it now. Try to find a reason to smile and to laugh. Hug a family member a little bit longer. And find ways to tune out the 24-hour-a-day coronavirus noise that is on television. You've got to get away from it and give yourself a break. Hang in there a bit longer until we get on the other side of this thing. And with that, I'm going to take a few questions that have been submitted by the media. Yolanda Fernandez will be asking me the questions. Yolanda? Mayor, our first three questions are from Josh Solomon at the Tampa Bay Times. Does the city plan to keep its bike share operating, and does it still plan to start the scooter pilot program? So, uh, regarding bike share and scooter uh, and uh, what we're doing on those, let me start with the scooter program first. Uh, we are still planning on moving forward with the scooter program. Uh, there are some steps that have to occur, though, before that program even becomes uh, ready uh, to hit the streets. First and foremost, we have to reach uh, agreement on a contractual basis with each of the providers, and we have to bring those agreements to City Council for their approval. Next week will be our first virtual city council meeting. So obviously we haven't been in a hurry to get that, those first couple steps done because we couldn't bring these contracts to council for their approval. Once we get council up and running and into a rhythm, we'll then be able to bring that forward to city council. But we're taking our time right now because obviously there's some other issues uh, that are far more important that we need to deal with in keeping our community safe and then we'll bring those forward. As far as our bike share program, uh, we are continuing uh, the bike share program. We're finding out that the use obviously has slowed down significantly. About once to every three days now, we're seeing bikes that are being used and they are being cleaned frequently, but that is something uh, like everything else that we're gonna continue to monitor. Mayor, does the city have a plan to shelter people who test positive but don't need hospitalization or who need to self-isolate outside their home due to exposure? So the question again is, are we going to test people who are, or uh, do we have a plan for sheltering people who test positive but don't need hospitalization or need to self-isolate outside their home? Uh, the city is currently exploring non-congregating sheltering options uh, for a, a variety of different scenarios. Uh, we're working closely with the county to identify hotels uh, and other lodgings uh, that would be willing uh, to serve our citizens and the need uh, that's described in the question. Um, this would include those that do need to isolate away from their households and have no other uh, housing options. So we're working with the county closely on making sure those options are available. Does the mayor plan to lift the city's state of emergency in tandem with the governor and or the county? And if not, what metrics does the city need to hit to feel comfortable lifting the state of emergency? So do we plan to lift the state of emergency along with the governor and the county? Uh, and if not, what are our metrics that we would be looking at to do that? First off, as far as I know right now, we've heard nothing of the county or the governor talking about uh, lifting our state of emergency and that certainly is not something that uh, is on our radar right now nor do I expect it to be any time in the, in the near future. Um, all of the decisions that we're making from whether we would lift a state of emergency or put even greater restrictions in place are all going to be based on data and science and the medical experts that we rely on so 
so heavily at this, at this time. Uh, and we'll continue to do that in making decisions about what's in the best interest for the residents of the city of St. Petersburg. Now we have a couple of questions from Dan Maddox at Fox 13. What is the city doing to prepare for the surge? Specifically, are there any facilities being prepped to be makeshift medical facilities? Certainly, if you've been watching the news, you've been hearing about uh, the surge that is expected to be coming here in the Tampa Bay area, in St. Petersburg and Pinellas County, as it's happening around the country. Um, and uh, the data that we have thus far suggests that we do have available uh, hospital beds, uh, and the availability of those beds would not be a problem. However, um, ICU beds and ventilators uh, are something that we uh, are monitoring and trying to make sure that we are in a good position uh, re related to both of those things. So we are working with the county health uh, to make sure that the issue re related to ICU beds and ventilators is addressed. Uh, and the county has, in fact, also identified uh, backup facilities in the event uh, those become necessary, too. Um, so we're on top of it. How's the city on having enough PPE for first responders? Yeah. So police have uh, PPE and additional masks for all its officers. Our fire uh, rescue folks have enough PPEs for the imme immediate future, but really in both cases. Uh, we are working with both uh, vendors and the county and state to acquire more PPE for future use. Uh, from our perspective, um, we want to make sure because we don't have, you know, there is no end that we can stick a pin and say, okay, that's the end date. Uh, and so we are trying to be as conservative in the way we approach this as possible and make sure that if this goes out beyond uh, which we hope it does, that we are in a good position when it comes to PPE. So we're going to continue to work with our partners with the county and the state and, and our local vendors. Okay. All right. And I think that was the last question. Again, thank you, St. Pete. Uh, let's keep our heads up, our, our chins up. Uh, let's follow the rules. Let's remember we're safer at home uh, and a brighter day is coming. Maybe it's a little bit of my kind of hippie roots that makes me believe that music uh, can change the world, and I, I, and I feel we're doing our part in doing that. I'm Brad Wenkos, founder of True Fire. We're based here in the Warehouse Arts District of St. Petersburg. True Fire is a publisher of interactive video software for music education. In the Warehouse Arts District, you still have a, a lot of warehouses and industry, but you have artisans, you have pottery, you have painters, studios. What do we have, three or four breweries even? So you've got this really kind of hip scene that's growing up Central Avenue. Uh, we're really looking forward to what the Warehouse Arts District is gonna look like in five years. I think it's gonna be one of the country's premier art centers.